after you practice and know exactly what you need, it's time for you to start organizing and rearranging everything on this table. Let's talk about the equipment first. If your equipment is fixed and also big like this film hood or not thick but relatively big like this uh, what you call spectrophotometer, the good idea is to use the feed from this camcorder like here, this camcorder, you use a camcorder and connect it to your laptop. Even though your laptop is on the next room, remember our left mic here, you can still convey the message and your student will still hear you from here. And about you hearing them, you can always bring a speaker, whatever, ramp up the volume of your laptop and that's done. The key here is to have this, what we call, long, long cable. Okay, long cable is important. And also the capture card because you use the camcorder here. And that is how to solve if your equipment is thick and big. If your equipment is relatively small, like this melting point apparatus, you can take it and bring it to your demo table. Okay, now I'm with the equipment now. Uh, by the way, during the audio visual setup, please make sure you know how much area is being captured by your webcam. For example, this webcam, the top webcam, you know in front of you now, I show you the image of what being captured by this webcam. So this equipment is being captured on its, uh, in its entirety and that is good. And also you don't need to make everything uh, clean uh, around you because for example, if you, I show you on the side, yeah, that's quite a mess there but the audience only see what you show them. For example, the audience only see this image. So the idea here is that you can have the entire surrounding in mass, uh, actually not mass, but you can put whatever you want to show during live stream near you, so long it's not competing with the demo area like this. So, so long you can do that, then the audience only see whatever you want to show. Equipment like this require you to look through this window. So you need to uh, sort of like uh, ready to adjust during the live stream. For example, in the live stream, if you want to show to the audience what happening in the window, you need to move your camera like this and then sort of like uh, move, practice, move this thing in such a way that uh, your audience can get the good view through this eyepiece. Remember, this is glass and your, you have like what we call light, lighting out, up, up there. So it can be, give a reflection also. So you need to sort of like find the, the angle so that you can minimize the reflection from the light above. Certain equipment like this UV, let me take this. You can see from the top, eh, from this uh, top view. Okay, so this UV, for example, let's say I have this thing. I have this thing and I have this thing. If I open this UV, you can hardly see anything. You need dark situation. Yeah, you can see the fluorescent much more uh, pronounced. So that's why you need to know uh, about what you want to do. That you need to plan ahead. After the equipment, let's talk about the chemical. As I mentioned before, if you have something big like this, you can always put into the flask like this, uh, pre-weight it first, or you can put inside this uh, aluminum foil. So you can save time by not wigging during the live stream. If you have liquid, you can put it into the small bottle like this. And if the liquid that you want to use is common, for example, like distilled water like this, make sure it's near you. Sometimes you want to show to the audience that about this, uh, for example, this solid, you want to show the entire container itself just to show this is the actual thing, like this, then it's very important for you to have this uh, trolley near to you. So I have the trolley here. Yeah, I bring the trolley here. So here, I also can put my liquid here. This thing, I will not put on the table because it will consume a lot of space. So if I not use it, I just put on the trolley. After the chemical, let's talk about the glassware. In the lab, there are many glassware, but not all of them are clean. So wash them and make sure you prepare a backup. Uh, if the technique asks you to prepare three, prepare six. And also some glassware like this glassware have some, even though it's clean, they have some label of there. You want to peel it off during the washing because you don't want to be mistaken with your own label. So let's wash it. After you wash, then you can dry. It's very important for you to dry your glassware in advance, one day before your streaming, because you don't want going into the stream with the wet glassware. Okay, uh, after you dry your uh, glassware, it's a good idea to label your glassware. Of course, you can always, uh, let me put here first, you can always label your glassware, I mean, you put your, uh, 
material during the live stream and label the glassware during the live stream. But remember, there are a lot of things to control during the live stream itself. You need to control your PC, your laptop, your projector, whatever. So uh, sometimes we forget. So it's a good idea to sort of like um, label in advance the glassware itself where you want to put your uh, chemical later on. There are reason for labeling. Labeling is very crucial. Okay, let me put this uh, away first. Okay, so we have the trolley near me. So that's a, another good thing about trolley. You can always put something big like this and put there and then just move it away. <laughs> and then you have like a clean a table again. Okay, again, about the, what we call, about the importance of uh, labeling. So say I have this, uh, what we call, these three flasks with a uh, colorless liquid. You cannot tell, let's see, let me put here. Uh, you cannot tell which flask is basically which. For example, let's say this is acid, this is uh, what we call, this is neutral, this is the base. If I move here like this, then during the live stream, you might, what we call, you might uh, confuse which one is which because everything is colorless. So that's one important of the labeling. You can use this to label uh, the sticker you can buy in stationery shop. So let's say this is acid, this is base, this is neutral. So let's say I want to put this as acid. Just put, just say acid and then you write the base and then you write the neutral. And then you can take this. So all these things you do in advance before the streaming itself. So I can put acid here. I can put base here and I can put the neutral over there. So now you know. Uh, which one is which. Not only this labeling help you know which one is which, it also can help you formulating the flow during the live stream. For example, if let's say I want to explain about this, this is what acid first, then I will put acid near me. And then let's say next, I want to explain about the neutral first. So which one is neutral? This one is neutral. I put the neutral in the second one and then the base on the last one, last row. So by doing this, I know that during live stream, I have a flow. I don't need to have like a paper to read, whatever, because I know this is acid, they are labeled acid, so I need to explain about acid first. This is the neutral, then I need to explain about the neutral second, and then lastly is the base. So it gives you the flow. Labeling also help prevent cross-contamination, that's very important. For example, let's say I have this solid, okay, this solid, so you see this solid. Also, if you look here, solid also, most solid in a lab is white in color so you cannot really differentiate which one is which unless they are labeled if there are no label here there are no label here i don't know which one is which so that's why the importance of labeling the first important uh, reason for labeling the second thing is as i said is to prevent the cross contamination for example let's say let's say i want to sort of like take some of it during the live stream so i can use a spatula let me take a spatula like this yeah, this is spatula, so I can show you. So this is spatula. I can use this to take this uh, chemical here. And then in order for me to use this same spatula to take another chemical, I need to wash, I need to uh, wipe this first. So that will take a lot of time. So the way to solve this is that rather to have one spatula, have three spatula. And then you need to label this spatula. Uh, because this spatula is too small, this spatula, uh, which one? Okay. Uh, okay, this spatula is too small to put any label on that. The idea is that you can put this spatula inside the test tube. For example, let's say I have this test tube here. So this test tube, you can just put the one test tube for one spatula and then another test tube. Let me take another test tube to one spatula. Eh, wait, wait, let me wait, 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 wait. Put another spatula and then another spatula and then you label the test tube itself. So it's better if you have something like this, the rack, the rack, yeah. So you can just put there and then you just put here, put one, put two, and put three. Uh, let me focus first. Uh, okay, let me bring here. So I think that's focus. And then you label over there. You label this is what, this is what, this is what. Just take this, uh, what we call this uh, sticker and then write something on, do on top of that. And then you just, Wait, and then you just stick on that. So that uh, is so difficult. So that's why you need to do this thing uh, not during the live stream. Labeling, don't do during the live stream. 
do it in advance because see to peel it off also takes i mean sometimes it's problematic so just put some here and then put there and then put another one here you know the drill right so let me do it so you just put here so take here put there and then put here and then put second and then straight away label lah for example let's say this spatula is for a for the acid just put acid and then if this spatula is for the base then write base and so on so at least now if you want to have if you have these three solid one is acid one is base and one is uh, neutral you know which one which spatula to be used not only you prevent cross contamination during your experiment you also prevent uh, you uh, cross contaminate this uh, sample itself same idea with the liquid for example let's say we know that we have these three different liquid all colorless all look the same but all different thing you can have a different uh, for example pipette tip per each uh, of the liquid for example this pipette tip you can put also inside this uh, bigger test tube and then you just do like that put like that and then you just put here put here and then put here and then as usual label the thing so later if you want to take this base so you find which label is for the base and then take your pipette and just take that and then pipette the base and then after you done you put it back there so you save not only the time or you also save this pipette tip you don't need to wash and uh, again and again and again if let's say you have this uh, small pipette tip normally people use this small pipette tip for small volume you have a lot of that then uh, you don't need to what we call to label you just use it and then put uh, for example you take one and then uh, you take it and then you just put into the waste beaker uh, one thing about the waste beaker is good idea to prepare the waste beaker like this okay for example if you have this pipette tip the small small pipette tip where you very difficult to label and also you need to find like a test tube that is so small which is so difficult uh, compared to this this is a long so you can have the long test tube but this tip is too small which tube do you have so if that's the case then you can just put this into the after you're done with the pipetting one of the liquid you just put here and after you've done the next one and then you put there and then you keep using the fresh one and uh, this is quite cheap so uh, and then you can always autoclave reuse again so not a worry about that lah. So that's about the waste beaker. Prepare a waste beaker also during your what we call during your live stream. Regarding the waste beaker, not only it useful uh, for this stuff, it's also useful for the big stuff. For example, let me clean this first. <laughs> you need a big uh, what we call the clean table to show. <laughs> let's say now, let's say I have this. Oh, yeah. Let's say this. This is separating funnel. Let's say, uh, let's say I put something inside uh, our red uh, syrup here. Okay. Say during the experiment you want to use this thing. You do this experiment and then you want to uh, remove some of it. So let's say I remove some of it. Uh, let's say I remove some of it. So I just open this knob and then I just remove some of it. Oh, oh, oh I need to open this. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's say you remove some of it. It's not a good way to show. <laughs> anyway. Okay. So let's say you remove some of that. And then you have the leftover inside this uh, spreading funnel. So you don't want to just put somewhere else because this spreading funnel have this pure shape. So you cannot just put on the table without uh, risking this open and spill up all the chemical that you use during the experiment. So uh, what you can do is that you can prepare not a waste beaker but a waste place like this i mean it's up to you what you want to use but you can put here okay you can see uh, in in front of you now you can just put there and put inside that and then after finish you can uh, what you call uh, wash out everything because sometimes when you use this thing you always want to use another thing also for example let's say after one uh, experiment for this red uh, liquid next experiment for this uh, colorless liquid so you always need to use uh, this uh, what we call this retort stand uh, for uh, number of uh, this separating funnel 
So if you have this uh, ready, this uh, waste beaker ready, you can always, after one another, you can always put somewhere here and then uh, continue with this thing. And even you can always use again this thing. Because if, let's say, I want to show again this one, I can just put again on the retort stand. So you don't uh, sort of like uh, remove everything from this, uh, what we call, from this uh, supporting funnel in case you want to show again this uh, liquid later on. So that's a good thing about uh, preparing the waste, not really waste, but something to hold your sample, your used sample. Okay. So done with that, um, what else? Uh, let's say you want to write during live stream. You can use this, uh, what we call this paper, A4 paper, normal A4 paper, but if you do it during live stream, even with this top view uh, angle, if you write something, something, it can be very small, the writing can be very small and cannot be seen by your audience. So what I recommend is that to use this uh, acrylic sheet, okay, the plastic you can find in the hardware store, and then use a marker to write on it. Okay, let's say I write here some thing here. So it's much bigger, but now they are no ink. Uh, so that's also one of the reasons for you to prepare in advance. You know this marker have uh, little ink, so it's time for you to change it before the live stream. Anyway, using this marker, you can see that it's much more legible. Whatever you want to write is much more legible, and also you can easily wipe off if you want to show something else, just take this tissue paper and wipe it off and then you're done. You can also save time by just pre-write on the, what we call on this acrylic sheet, for example, like this, like this, I already write something, you can see, yeah, I already write something on that. So this, I'm using what we call the permanent marker. So you can always remove it using the acetone or alcohol later on if you want to reuse this again. But anyway, this is cheap, so it's okay. Um, yeah, you can pre-write it on, pre-write it first before the live stream in order to save uh, your time lah. And also it's a good idea for you to, what we call, to prepare some black uh, cardboard, for example, like this. Okay, like this, black cardboard like this. Uh, I'm preparing this because if you look on my table now, my table now is quite, what we call, is white, is, is light in color. So the table now is light in color. So if, let's say I want to show something colorless, let's say like this, let's say like this, something happening in this colorless liquid, then if I put on table, even with the uh, top camera, you cannot really see what's happening. So that's why if I have this thing, this, what we call this uh, black cardboard, I can put underneath it. And then if something happen underneath this, what we call this, uh, inside this uh, flask, then the audience can see it clearly. Lah. So you can zoom this thing, you can zoom this, uh, uh, what we call the, the top view camera using the software, whatever. But the idea now is that you create a contrast so that the audience can see what is happening inside this flash. So as you can see, there are a lot of things to prepare before the actual live stream. On top of setting up all this audiovisual equipment, you need to also consider the material, the stuff that you want to show and also you need to work out uh, to do the experiment yourself in order to, for example, during live stream, there are no hiccups happening. Uh, this is, as I said, this is not uh, like a gaming style live stream or vlogging style live stream. That's pretty easy because you just open your PC and then you react on what you're playing. But this demo style, you need to show to people, you need to do physical stuff. That's make the difference. So there are a lot of preparation on that, um, but the more you prepare, the easier the live stream will become. Uh, this preparation is always uh, what we call uh, live stream specific. It depends on what you want to show. For example, I want to show about this chemical experiment during the live stream. So I prepare everything based on what I need. But if let's say you want to show about the what we call the electronic uh, stuff during the live stream, then you bring your stuff uh, near the demo table. Uh, but the idea that I showed during this video, for example, labeling, you can also emulate it. Uh, even if you use the electronic stuff, for example, you can put a label on every resistor, every motor that you need to use. You can also use the idea of uh, using this, what I call uh, the board, the, the acrylic board to write things so that uh, people can see it and so on. So I can just give like a general uh, idea about what you can do to prepare. 
but the specific you need to find yourself. Every live stream, every demo live stream uh, will be different depending on what you want to achieve. I think that's it for now. I already uh, set up all my camera, all the preparation is on the table. I already checked the OBS, Zoom, and also the internet. Hopefully tomorrow will be smooth. If anything happened during the live stream tomorrow, then let it be. I mean, things happen. You yourself must try the best first in order to expect the best. Don't just do it uh, just like that and expect uh, the thing will be going smooth. You yourself first need to do whatever you can. Okay, one more thing. Uh, during the part one, I don't show this uh, camcorder. During the part one, I only show I use only the top one, the side one, and also the front camera. But when I do preparation, I just found that I cannot view things inside this glass chamber clearly if I'm using this uh, any of this webcam. And I found that the when I use this uh, what I call camcorder, it give a better what I call better image. So that's why this importance of uh, content preparation, you can set up all the audiovisual uh, equipment, but at the end of the day, you need to test the experiment. This is the example of how uh, content preparation can help you uh, detect any problem. So I know now I need to use this, uh, what we call camcorder, I need to use this uh, capture card in order to view something inside this chamber. Uh, one more thing before uh, we going back. Um, don't forget, this is very important, don't forget to charge uh, your battery. Your, uh, this is not battery because this connected, all this connected to this webcam, this webcam, and uh, the front webcam is connected to the laptop, and the laptop will be connected to the power uh, source. So that's not really a problem here. But now, because I already introduced a new thing here, camcorder, so I need to make sure I take into account that I need to charge the battery for this camcorder. So that's one thing. And also, because during the live streaming, I'm using the wireless mic, so the one that I'm wearing now. So that's also battery. Uh, so this one, uh, let me show you. Where is the thing? Yeah, this one. So this one, this also battery operated. So I need to uh, bring it back and charge it at my home. So other than that, I think uh, that's it from, for now. So I see you um, tomorrow during the actual live stream.